everyone, this is Star with a message for you today. Today is Sunday, February 26, 2017, and it is the day of the solar eclipse. It just happened, um, the peak of it, I believe, was about an hour ago. I was in meditation prior to the peak, and I could feel the energy coming in, and Oh my gosh, I have to tell you, I woke up this morning feeling probably better than I felt in a long time. And I, um, especially over the last week, it's been really chaotic and crazy, very intense energies for everybody. I'm sure you're all experiencing some level of um, discomfort. Um, I guess that's the best way I would word it and put it for you because it's intense right now. Um, I am here with a message, a brief message, and a reading. I'm going to do a reading for you because I feel like this energy is really powerful, and um, I've been wanting to write about this for days, but I, I've i been so busy catching up on all the um, card readings that I had put out there as a special for Valentine's Day, and I was delayed. So those of you who... Um, purchase them. You should all have them by now. They are all done and complete. Anybody who purchased after that date, of course, I'm still working on yours if you're on that list and you haven't gotten one yet. Um, I believe there might be just one other person that's left afterwards. Um, I am really excited I got those done. And I also feel it's funny, as much as it was like interference on my end with um, family crisis, I really believe that some of the readings had to wait until this time. So I hope that helps you and, and gives you a little sense of comfort why your, your reading might have come in late and why you didn't get it when you wanted it. Um, the universe works that way and I trust that all the time and it's hard for me as the um, the reader, the healer, the teacher to say to people, oh, I'm sorry, I can't do it for you right now. But um, the more you're on this path and the more you're in alignment with your soul, you understand from a different perspective why things happen. It's like the, it really is like a divine alignment that needs to happen for that to occur so you can get proper information. So I wanted to get you um, a, a little bit of information. So what I'm experiencing now is a lot of uh, change, a lot of, craziness, haziness going on in the universe, and it's because we're moving into, where it's a solar eclipse in Pisces, and I'm a Pisces, my birthday is March 1st, and I'm very excited about my birthday, I'm actually, like, a little sad about it, um, I will be turning 45 this year, so that's actually a big number for me, um, I'm a little, you know, a little sad because I'm not with my twin physically right now, permanently, and I hope that's coming up soon, but I feel like, you know, this is comfortable for me being in Pisces because I'm a Pisces. And it, and in Pisces, I am a, a Pisces um, sun, Pisces rising. So my ascendant is a Pisces. And I'm a Virgo moon. So I have a lot of Pisces energy and it, it feels comfortable. And I'm very comfortable in my emotions and rising through my emotions. So that's something I've learned to navigate over the last few years particularly. And that's been an amazing goal and gift in my life because it keeps me out of my little spiral of hell that I used to talk about, which I used to go into all the time about me and my twin. Um, and I'm sure some of you know what I'm talking about, probably still do in your life currently. I hope that it's not happening often because that's pretty bad. I, uh, I, I find that... Um, this time right now on the planet is probably the most volatile in terms of emotion because I feel many people are being exposed to things that they've never seen before or never heard of or were in denial about. And when you think of an eclipse, it casts a shadow. And so when you see the shadow, all that stuff starts to reveal itself to you. A part of you that you hadn't seen before or beliefs or memories, um, past life stuff might be coming up, ancestral stuff might be coming up. For me, it was ancestral. So this solar eclipse is casting a pretty big shadow for the moment and it's going to show us a magnificent amount of truth that we need to move through. And if we use the energy in the proper way, and I'm saying proper way because of the words my guides are giving me, the proper way is to actually look at the stuff that's scaring the crap out of you, <laughs> the fear. So for me, for example, I, like I just said, I'm going to have my birthday on Wednesday, um, March 1st, and there is a little fear about going forward because I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not certain. I know that I'm not going to be living where I'm living for much longer. I've been feeling that for about a year and a half, but I've been feeling it greater um, in my body greater than I've been feeling it. Um, I used to have an idea of what, what I was doing. I do know where, 
I do know that it's going to be all perfect where I'm going. I feel like it's all going to line up and everything will work out because that's often what happens for me. Um, but I don't have the clarity, the knowing of everything. It's really funny. I can do all these great readings for people. I'm usually really in tune. And um, when it comes to me, I still have that little bit of a veil. And I think that's intentional for me because I've chosen in this life to not know a lot of things. I don't know why I did that. My guides and I had a conversation about that. You know, for years, I wasn't able to find out what my um, ascendant was, my rising sign. I didn't know the time of my birth. So all my life, I've been asking, never got it. So I, I didn't know. And then about... I don't know, six years ago, my mother out of nowhere tells me when I was born. I'm like, I thought you didn't know. All these years I've asked you. She's like, oh, yeah, that's when you were born. Your father was getting donuts. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so it's this weird it's this weird thing where um, on my journey, my guides had told me, like, you didn't want to know. You didn't want those influences. You didn't want to be influenced. You wanted to use your mastery because you are a master. So, um I think a lot of us that do this and we are on this path, that happens a lot for us. We don't get our divine answer. We need some guidance. So I always ask for guidance from people. And I thank all of you who offered guidance and support along the way and on this journey. So thank you. Um, but this eclipse, you know, the, the clear messages that I'm getting is look at your crap. You know, actually the words my guide said, look at your shit. <laughs> I don't usually use that word, but look at your shit. Um, look at it. Delve into it. Dig in. Find out what is the message that you need to learn. What is it that you need to have with you at all times? What is it that's most um, important for you now? Um, your purging and releasing for the next several weeks, it will continue. Like you've already started, it's going to continue. But as that's happening, I feel like the energy will become lighter and lighter as we move forward. Um not everyone will experience that. It depends on where you are in the ascension um, level, meaning where you are on your ladder. And most people will feel it won't be as intense as it's just been. It was very karmic energy recently, very heavy, heavy, deep, dark, uprooted stuff that's coming up to the surface that needed to be looked at that perhaps we thought we finished or perhaps we thought we were not needing to deal with anymore. It's done. I'm done. I walked away. I'm done. So all that stuff has been surfacing. But I also feel that um, the next several weeks, you're still going to be cleaning out, purging. And I'm hearing clean house. Clean your house. Get rid of stuff. And I'm like looking around. I'm like, oh, if you saw my corner over there, there's a, there's a bunch of boxes that actually just need to be recycled. But I'm so bad about that. Um, meaning I, I wait till there's like four or five of them so that I can recycle them all at once. <laughs> because I have to go to a recycling place. Um, there's also this energy of, you know, as you're cleaning up, it's going to feel lighter because you're not carrying the baggage anymore. So that's a big deal. The other interesting energy that um, I feel is happening, we're going to be moving into our equinox energy shortly, and it's not that far away. I feel like it's coming really rapidly and really quickly our way. Use this time to perfect the tools you do have. So any of the tools you have, start using them. And if you don't know what they are, then ask, you know, ask spirit to guide you, ask for some support and guidance, and it will come to you through people, through voices, through messages that people talk about. Um... It's important to really listen within you right now because you're going to be getting the guidance. You're going to be the one that has to discern what is true and what is not true, what is real and what is not real. What is um, your future and what is your past? Like You want to navigate your way out of the past in the best way possible and the smoothest, easiest transition possible. And that really starts with you inside. So I'm going to recommend a couple things to you. I think I've done this in another video recently, um, but my guides have been, you know, really, really strong about putting this out for all of you. So one of the things that, um, that we find on this path is, you know, learning to navigate out of our emotions and navigate through, not out of, I'm sorry, through our emotions we want to learn not to get pulled under. And the way we get pulled under, like as if it's an undertow, it's pulling us under because we have these old thoughts and beliefs and patterns and um, thought forms that are either projected at us through family, friends, um, co-workers, relationships, and society at, whole, at large, um, or things that we've been program to believe inside of us we have to question those and really look at those and so if we could learn to 
understand where the beliefs are coming from and the underlying piece of the emotion, then we can navigate through it and feel it and move on. So a lot of times now I actually feel it and I move on. Feeling it and moving on doesn't mean I feel it for five minutes and I move on within the next five. What that, what that means is I feel it as long as I need to be in it and, and navigate through it and understand where it's coming from and do some of the things that I know, like meditate, ground, anchor um, into the earth, and run energy through me, write in my journal. Oh, journal has been such a helpful gift since the family crisis I had. So I feel like it's always been a gift, by the way. I use, I've been journaling for years, but recently... I think I avoided writing in my journal because I didn't want to write, oh, I miss my twin. I haven't seen him. I haven't talked to him. I don't want to write the same things over and over. I actually used it to channel through and work through all the emotions that I was feeling during the family stuff. So it's been a great tool to revisit and to use in that way. So I encourage all of you to do that. But one of the things that I've learned on my journey, and it's actually around this time of year, it's such a great message. And um, I, I started to... Several years back when I was on my journey and I had just started my journey, I'd say like late 90s, I tried to be in the early 2000s. I tried really hard to be um, Catholic. I was raised Catholic. I tried really hard to be a good Catholic. You know, I, I went to church. I attended church and I gave up for Lent negative self-talk. And some of you may have heard this um, story before, but I feel like I need to share it with you. So... One of the things that has always been interesting is being a Catholic for Lent, you give up, and Lenten season, you know, begins actually on my birthday, March 1st, and it always has begun around my birthday, or I've been in, my birthday's been in it somehow because of the Easter time, and it's a 40-day period where you give up something. So in my religion, we, we used to, we gave up things, so as a child, I'd give up ice cream. Well... You would think that's such a big deal. What a wonderful thing. My parents thought it was a great thing because they loved ice cream. Well, I didn't. I didn't really care if I gave up ice cream. So it wasn't a big deal that I gave it up. I mean, sometimes it was because, you know, I might have wanted ice cream, but it didn't really matter. I never gave a cake because my birthday was always during <laughs> during Lent. Um, and I ended up giving up ice cream back as a child. So when I became really, tried to really be Catholic and then I, I learned that being Catholic was not actually being spiritual. That was just more of a man-made religion and and belief system. And that's fine if any of you are and that's what you practice. But for me, it didn't resonate anymore. So I feel like I'm part of everything, all that is. And my religion is more spirituality and connection to spirit. So when I was trying to be Catholic, I decided I was going to give up one thing that was near and dear to my heart. The most important thing to me was my negative self-talk, my negative image, my negative belief system. I had come from a a life um, working in politics and all that negativity that surrounded me and people that were pretty stuck in their ways. And I looked around and I realized, like, I, I don't want this anymore, so what can I do? And so what was near and dear was the belief systems, the patterns that were running in my brain. So I started using... Um, Lent as a way to get rid of them. So here's the funny little tidbit on the side note of it. So during those 40 days, I had more dates in those 40 days than I did the four years prior. Why? Why did I, Why did that happen? Why do you ask? Why you ask, I'm sure. Um, well, I had it because my light changed, my energy changed. I actually got positive. So um, back then, um, I think I had a tool of whenever I got negative, I would reframe it or I would have like a phrase to stop it. I would have all these little techniques and tools to stop me from being in the negative energy. So I I used that for those 40 days. It was the most empowering 40 days, I have to tell you. But somewhere inside my psyche, I thought when Lent was over, 40 days was over, somewhere in my psyche, I was like, oh, it was over. Okay, I guess I can go back to normal. Well, that wasn't so great, um, which meant I had kept some of the tools that I used. I kept some of the um, positive energy, but I still had those moments of being drawn into negativity, and I would recognize it with people that I had in my life, and so I started to change me, and so the people in my life didn't really know how to handle that, so I started to gradually keep it there, but it wasn't consistent, so the following year, I gave it up as a New Year's resolution, and ever since then, I've been really good about paying attention to that, and so on my journey... As that was happening, a lot of people seemed to disperse from my life. And you would think that, oh gosh, you know, I'm friendless. And I did feel that way at times. But it was simply that I was no longer in the frequency and vibration of those people in um, in their negative self-talk and their negative thoughts. And, you know, people can project they're happy. But if you're really not, that's what's really coming out. So I, I remember I had a coworker at the time that... 
I would be like, how are you doing? She's like, I'm fabulous. How are you? And inside I could feel like this misery coming out of her and just being like, okay, well, I hope you have a good day. And I kept going. Um, I'm really, it's really important to me that people are authentic with themselves and authentic with those around them because that is really who you are in any given moment. And I started to be away from those people who pretended and had a false image of what's out there and false projection. And that happens, you know, throughout my journey because I've, I've had people come and go. Um, because one of the things that I've noticed, I always stay on my spiritual journey and I don't leave it. I stay in that space. I, I might fall off the wagon, if you will, like during my car accident, I definitely got some negative energies and negative vibes. And boy, did the negative entities love that. They just amped me up with that because they feed off of that. So I had to relearn in some ways. And I ran this class that I'm going to be running on March 1st, starting on March 1st. I ran it over uh, two years in a row. And I have to tell you, that transitioned me from being really depressed and in such physical pain that I was debilitated. I didn't walk for almost two and a half years. And I needed to reprogram my brain. Well, the accident happened, which was a long story and I'm not going to go into it, but it happened, but it kicked up trauma for me. And so it like really reactivated all the trauma in my cells and then it reactivated all the negativity and negative thinking. And as that happened, I found that, you know, I was bringing in more negativity and a lot of people that came into my life at the time, um, they were in a lower frequency, but I was too, because I wasn't... I was sick. I was in pain. So I needed to find my way out of it. So I went back to my old tools. And this toolbox I have is like vast and, and magnificent. And I used it to help me. So by running that class, I was helping me. And so I did it for two years in a row. Well, I am going to offer it again. But this time, I'm actually going along with Lent. So it's going to start on March 1st until um, April 15th. And this class is a 45-day class. There's like literally nothing you need to attend. There's no time with it. Simply, you're going to receive a daily email in your inbox with a tip, tool, guidance, um, support, tidbits on self-love, letting go of negative energies, letting go of negativity, um, how to stay more positive, you know, whatever spirit wants to guide. So I've been running this class, but I have to tell you, even though I've been running it for two years, I revisit it every time I go back and um, do it. I don't do the same things. I add, add things. I take things away. I make it more specific to what's going on now and what is necessary for the group that I'm working with. So even though I don't see you and I don't actually have you here physically with me, I tune into the people that sign up for the class and I send out my energy towards them and what they need. And so when I start to do my class, it edits, it changes. Sometimes there's similarities, sometimes there's not. And I feel like it's really beneficial and actually really important for a lot of you now to take advantage of it. And I'm hoping Twin Flames will take advantage of this class because um, I really feel like March is such a turning point of this year to me it's the new year really officially and I feel like the equinox on the, on the 20th is actually the official new year um, but I I feel like this month is really transformational in many ways and I like that it's during Lent you know um, for those of you that are Christian that might be like oh yay that's a great thing to give up you might not be thinking that but um, I like that energy of this time because I feel we're really at a place where the new beginning of this year is and where unions can happen and, and things can change. So I really encourage you to check it out. You know, click on the link. I put, I'll put the link inside here. Click on it. Email me if you have questions. Um, feel free to contact me. But I, I'm making it affordable. It's less than a dollar a day. It's for 45 days. Actually, it probably is 46 days because... Um, March has 31 days because I want to do it till the 15th. Um, it is 45 days of transformation. And there will be tools, techniques, little tidbits of information, but also little homework things that you can do, things you can try. And I highly recommend that you try some of it. You don't have to. You know, you get what you put in in any class. That's always how it is. You get what you put in. So if you read it and it's just enough to read it, that's wonderful. If you... Um, if you read it and you're like, oh, I'm going to journal along with the class, then you'll get a little bit more. But if you read it and you say, I'm going to journal or I'm going to do the homework or I'm going to try this technique, that will be even better for you. 
I just, I want all of us to come into union. I feel like it's so important, not only for me and my twin, not only for you and your twin, but for the earth, for all of humanity. I mean, we came here to change the world. I mean, that it, I say that my whole body tingles and I have tears welling up in me. We are here to change the world. We're not here to just um, suffer and be in pain and longing for our twin. We're actually here to be in union with them. Whatever capacity that is at this moment, we're meant to be in. So in, in my capacity with my twin flame right now, we're in union. He's etherically here with me, but he's not physically here with me. But he is etherically right there. And what I know to be truth is whatever I do impacts him. So if he's stuck in his head, and I can tell you my beloved is um, he's a lawyer. I think I've said this before. I'm not positive everybody knows. But when you think of a lawyer, thank you for the jokes. I'm sure some of you are feeling them or thinking of them. But um, And there are a lot of good jokes about lawyers. But he he's a beautiful soul. But he is so stuck and programmed. Typically, this is where he's been. Stuck and programmed to think in a certain way. And what's crazy is he's stuck in the energy of it because that's his job. And his job is very much mental. It's very black and white. It's how he uses his mind to to navigate a lot of things. He's very intuitive using his gifts, I'm sure, in how he does his work, and I, I know it just from talking to him. But the truth is that he's very, um, he, he's working in something that's very meshed in 3D, in a 3D reality that's been in existence and upheld by the old paradigm for so long that it's really hard for him to stay here in his heart. Even though I think his heart is like driving everything and it's pushing him, I think he has a difficult time staying there. So, um, I know doing this technique is really beneficial, not only to me, to keep me on my path and to remind me and to remember the tools that I already have available to me, because many of the tools might be reminders for all of you as well, but it also helps him, because believe me, what's trickling into me is trickling into him. Maybe not as fast or not as quickly, but it is trickling. And the fact that I believe most of the divine masculine hearts are being really ripped open with all this eclipse energy there's no way that the energies that are going to be coming through and any healing I do or you do is not going to affect our twins. It will absolutely affect our twins. So I encourage you to please check out this class and um, I'm running it for less than a dollar a day. So I, I really hope that you will. And you know, it's funny, I just saw two, 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 two. So I'm, I'm talking a long time now. I'm sorry. I'm going to do the reading. Uh, but 2222 is half faith because it's just around the corner. I really believe that. And if you, if anybody ever calls my, um, my office phone or, or looks at like little taglines for me, I often say, remember miracles just around the corner. I really believe it is for so many of us. Do I believe every single twin flame is going to be in union in March and April and May? No. Do I believe the potential exists for every single twin flame? Absolutely. Do I believe that there will be twin flame unions? Absolutely. Do I believe I'll be one? I hope so. I don't know for a fact because, of course, I told you, they don't tell me everything. Um, but I, I really believe we're in alignment. We're coming into alignment for that. And the more I work on my thinking, because in this society of humanity right now on the globe, on this planet, we're always, um, we've always been pushed by ego, by our thought processes, our thinking. And the divine 5D grid is all about heart thinking. But how do we get here if we have all the mind stuff still programmed in us and we have all the old paradigm energy still um, filtering and affecting us in some way? I mean, it's really important that we move through that. And I, I don't know, I just, I find that it's really important for us at this time to be in our heart and to get out of our head and use whatever tools are available to us to navigate our brain and our head and our thoughts. And my guides are telling me that I should end the video here <laughs> so that I could do the next video will just be pure reading. But I really hope that you watch this video and um, that you consider taking this class. I feel like it's the next step you know, and it's the first step before the manifestation class. So I am going to be rescheduling the manifestation class. I am going to have someone assist me today with my laptop and the volume because I'm hearing that my stuff is blaring and I don't mean for that to be the case. I do talk excitedly and maybe it gets loud and I talk quietly and maybe it's not loud enough. I'm not sure, but I hope that this is easy for you to hear. Um, and 
I just, I want you all to be in union. I want us all to be, like, I get this vision of us all holding hands around the globe, <laughs> around the earth, and looking down and saying, wow, look what we did. Look at the changes we brought and the light and the love that we brought to the planet. That was our job, and we did it, and we're here for it. So I, I wish you blessings of love and, and guidance and light and a smooth and easy path to physical union for all of you. Um, namaste. I will be back with a short video next for the reading because that's coming in. But this is like a solar eclipse days of transformation to you because I really believe that this solar eclipse energy is making it possible for us to move through into a smoother road to union. Namaste.